If you've got a quadcopter like this Mobulus 6 with built-in Express LRS on an SPI-based receiver, then you've got a problem. Because Express LRS 3.0 has released and it's got some really cool features that make people want to upgrade. But Betaflight doesn't have Express LRS 3.0 built in for SPI-based receivers, which means that what, what do you do? Do you flash your module back and forth between 3.0 and 2.0, depending on whether you want to fly your tiny whoop or not? No, that's stupid. Do you spend another 40 bucks on a new module and have one module be on 2.0 and one on 3.0? That's, I mean, okay, but why would you have to do that? That's dumb too. Instead, you can do what I'm gonna show you in this video today and flash a nightly build of Betaflight that has Express LS 3.0 support I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. The reason I'm kind of squinting at the prospect of flashing this firmware is because, yeah, on the upside, it makes it possible for you to bind your SPI-based TinyWhoop to ExpressLRS 3.0 module. And that means that when you put ExpressLRS 3.0 on all of your other receivers, you won't, you'll also be able to bind it to your tiny whoops. And that's a good thing. But it also means that you're gonna flash a nightly build of Betaflight 4.4. And nightly builds are famous for not, for having bugs. Now, I don't know for sure whether this nightly build that I'm gonna show you today does or doesn't have any bugs in it. I don't know what features it might have in Betaflight 4.4 that are different from Betaflight 4.3, but I am going to show you how to flash this, and if you feel like that's the right decision for you, you can follow along. Here in the Betaflight GitHub repo, we can find a discussion about ExpressLRS 3.0 compatibility mode. And in fact, this version of Betaflight doesn't contain the full ExpressLRS 3.0 feature set. It contains a minimal feature set that will let you bind to ExpressLRS 3.0, but you're still gonna be missing some things. What does it contain? It contains the low raw 500 hertz, 250 hertz, 150, and 50 hertz modes with telemetry and MSP, but it does not contain the new FLRC modes, the new DVDA modes, the new full res PWM modes, and nor does it contain Betaflight configuration over Wi-Fi. Well, it could never contain that because that requires an ESP chip, which isn't present if you've got an SPI-based receiver built into your flight controller but it does contain the basic LoRa modes and a few other improvements that will let you bind, and that is gonna get you going at least today. By the way, if you're not sure what FLRC, DVDA, full res PWM and all that is, you should go check out my full ExpressLRS 3.0 release overview, which goes into all the major new features, including the ability to connect to Betaflight over Wi-Fi without ever plugging USB in. There's a link to that in the video description below. You can check that out when you're done here. And if we just scroll down this page, we find this comment and it's got, do you want to test this code? Here you have an automated build, assets. I'll put a link to that comment down in the video description below as well. And I'm gonna click assets here and it's gonna download a zip file. You can see I've downloaded this zip file before. This is the fourth, fifth time I've downloaded it. If you click that link and you get a 404 error, the reason is that you are not logged in to GitHub. You have to be able to log, you have to be logged in to GitHub to get that file. So over here in the upper right, you're gonna need to create a GitHub account if you don't have one and you're gonna need to log in. Sorry, that's the rules. And if we look in this zip file, we're gonna see several hex files that can be used to flash the flight controller. But there's another step that makes this a little more complicated than it otherwise would be. And the reason it's complicated is that these are just the generic Betaflight targets. So the way the Betaflight manages its uh, flight controller targets is there are generic targets which are specific to the uh, microprocessor on the flight controller. So we can see we've got one here for the F7X2 uh, processor, the F405 processor, the F411SX, the F411, and so forth. Every flight controller is going to have one of these microprocessors on it. And then the manufacturer of the flight controller will do a whole bunch more work 
that defines things like the motor outputs, the et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that stuff is held in what's called the board specific target. So if we look here in the firmware flasher and we see all of these other boards, these are all board specific targets and they contain all of the information that's needed to flash and set up the flight controller. But these generic targets do not contain all the information needed to flash and set up the flight controller. And in fact, if we were to flash one, we would find that the flight controller wouldn't work. So what we need to do is we need to connect to our flight controller and we need to get the board specific stuff off the flight controller so that after we flash it, we can then restore that stuff. And I'm gonna do that by connecting and going to the CLI. And I'm just gonna type the word version and I'm gonna see what firmware is currently on my flight controller. And what I see here is Crazy BF4 SX1280. And I'm a little confused because normally we will see a board specific and a generic target here, but I only see the one. I guess the manufacturer is Hemo Happy Model. If I go to the firmware flasher, yeah, there's Crazy BF4 SX1280. So that must be my target. Let's look here. I see Betaflight 440, ah, STM32 F411 SX1280. That's probably the target that we want. Are there gonna be board specific defines for this? Well, the first thing you should always do before you flash your flight controller is go to presets and hit save backup. All right, we're gonna save that. I'm gonna grab this file out of the assets zip folder. I'm just gonna put it on my desktop so it's easy to find. And I'm gonna go to update firmware. I am then going to load firmware local and I'm gonna pick that hex file and I'm gonna flash firmware. Now, when you do this, it's very important that you have Crazy BF4 SX1280 selected here in the pulldown or whatever target your flight controller had. Because Betaflight is going to flash the generic target right there, which contains all the Betaflight code, but not the target specific definitions that will finish setting up your flight controller. By selecting the correct target here in the pulldown menu when you flash, then when you hit connect, Betaflight will ask, do you want to apply custom defaults? And that is the part where the, the, the board specific stuff gets applied and the, and the configuration of the flight controller is finished. Um, some people might think that because you're flashing from a local file, you don't need to worry about this pull down menu. And that's not true. The pull down menu is what completes the configuration after you flash the generic target here. So we'll hit apply custom defaults and that will complete that. Now, at this point, we're getting a warning which says that our configurator is out of date. And that's one of the consequences of flashing a Betaflight nightly build is that you need to update your configurator to the nightly version as well. Uh, I'll put a link down in the video description to the Betaflight configurator nightly builds. And this is the world you're gonna be living in until Betaflight 4.4 comes out, which is expected to be sometime in the November, December, 2022 timeframe. That's how just what happens when you use nightly builds. And maybe that $40 second module is starting to sound like a better idea now. I don't know, it's up to you. Now in just a second, I'm gonna see if this quadcopter will in fact bind to my ExpressOS 3.0 module or if this has all just been a huge waste of time. But before the big reveal, can I just take a second to remind you that I have a Patreon. Patreon is a website where you can subscribe to me. For as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it, the amount that you subscribe at is totally up to you. Uh, just think about how much value you get from my content and then decide how much you want to put in my hat every month. Patreon is one of the best ways that you can support my content because it means that I don't have to worry as much about if YouTube's going to kind of screw me over on the ad revenue this month or anything like that. Every month, Couple bucks comes out of your pocket, goes into my wallet, and I can keep making this kind of content. If you value this content, if I helped you solve problems, if I educate you, if I entertain you, for any reason, if today is the day you feel like signing up, there's a link in the video description to my Patreon website. And if I haven't earned it yet, I'll keep making the content. You keep watching the content, and hopefully that day will come. Okay, let's see if this SOB is gonna bind. There we go, get Express LRS, and let's see if we can set the binding phrase and get it to bind to our Express LRS 3.0 module. So I'm just going to paste in this uh, command that sets the binding phrase 
to match my module. By the way, if you need to know more about setting up and configuring SPI-based Express LRS receivers, I've got a tutorial about how to do that, and I'll put a link, of course, down in the video description. And sure enough, it is in fact bound, although it is complaining about a model mismatch. I don't know how model match got turned on. I don't use that. And, uh, and there you go. We've got the C in the upper right indicating that it is bound. Yay, it's working. Bear in mind, you still will have some limitations. For example, you will not be able to select any of the D or the F modes. Again, link in the video description to my full Express LRS uh, 3.0 release video if you need to know more about that. That is how you can get Express LRS on your SPI-based receiver if that's what you want to do. And oh, bonus, now you've got Betaflight 4.4, so good luck with that. <laughs> I don't know what, go check out the nightly build uh, discussions to see what they're doing over there. What kind of cool new stuff is there? Now this video has showed you how to get your SPI-based receiver to Express LRS 3.0. But there's another problem that people are running into when updating their module where it says invalid size or incorrect size given and it won't update. If you're running into that issue, I made a video. It's very simple to fix uh, and I'll put a card on screen for how to sort that out. As well, I'm gonna put a card on screen for my Express LRS 3.0 overview, which gets all the new features of Express LRS. If you, it's down in the video description as well, but click that card if you like. Happy flying.